Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Excel Quick Trainer, we're going to discuss Excel formatting. This is video number five of a planned set of training videos. The target audience is math and science students and the objective is to get you up to speed quickly with using Excel. First up for Excel formatting, we'll discuss how to do bold italic underline and set the font types and sizes. So I've entered Hello World into this cell. No formatting yet and we're gonna walk through different types of formatting. So up here in the toolbar, we can do bold, goes to bold, we can click it again, it undoes it. Go to italics, click it again, undoes it. Go to underline, click it again, undoes it. Underline's interesting, there's a drop down because there's a double underline. If I move off, you can see the double underline. And we'll undo it and set it back to the single underline. Okay, let's see. Font, default is Calib Calibri. And font size is 11. We can change to whatever we want. Scroll down, ah, Arial Black. And maybe we want a font size of 22. So we can also change the font size here, smaller, bigger. And as I click each one of these, it's basically just walking down the items in the drop down list or up. Bigger, 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 one at a time, smaller, smaller, smaller. And the big gaps 24, 26, 28, 36, 48, that's actually what's in the drop down. Biggest is 72. You know, I believe, let's see how big it goes. I believe you can type values that aren't there. Yep. So 148 isn't in the drop down, but I can override it. Uh, and the smallest is 8. But there are times when I'm building a form and I want to get really precise on the line width, I'll actually just come in here and type in a 4 or type in a 2. <laughs> and I have a narrow. And if I auto size it because the fonts too, it's going to go right back to that. So I can control the line height by overriding the font size. Next up, the font color, the back color, and a little trick I do to get the page to look all white like a sheet of paper and hide the grid lines. To change the font color, you can simply click the button and the default is red, and I have red font. You can also click the drop down and automatic would switch it back to black or I have theme colors, maybe I like that orange, or I have standard colors down here, or I have more colors, which will pop up a dialog box, and I have a color wheel. Start at the middle with white, and then you work your way out to reddish or whatever. So that's the color wheel. And then there's custom, where you can put in the actual RGB or QSAT. Ooh. Or you can pick a color that's close, and if you want to go lighter, you just go on this scale vertically up. Go back here, maybe pick a brown, and then go back here, and then go up. So then you stay in the same color window. You're just getting lighter or darker. So lots of different ways. Let's apply that font. Look what it looks like. Ooh, too bright. Back to automatic. So that is the font colors. Back color is very similar. It's a button to the left. Default is yellow. Click it. I have a yellow back color. Click the drop down, theme colors, standard colors, no fill, clears it right out, or more colors. And you have the same color wheel and custom colors over here. So what's a trick that I do? Um, first, before I show you a trick, the trick is to get rid of all these gray lines. And these gray lines, are different from the borders. They're not borders. These gray lines are just always present in Excel. But sometimes I want, and they don't print by default, but sometimes on screen I don't want those gray lines. So one way you can do it is go to page layout and go uncheck the grids. Or you can go to view and you can uncheck the same grid lines. I don't like to do either of those. <laughs> I like to highlight the entire cell back at home and set the color to white. And when the color's white, the borders go white. Everything is white. Now, it doesn't matter what I do with grid lines. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do with the page layout. They're the same. This grid line is the same as this grid line. See, it's unchecked. But then I don't have to, so I do have to set worksheet by worksheet the color to white. But once it's set, it's done. And it doesn't matter what other people's settings are. The sheet will always look white. So I like to do that little trick with back color. Next up, horizontal and vertical alignment. So I'm going to enter the number 123 and tab off of it 
and horizontally it aligns to the right. Why? Because it's a number. I'm going to go down a row, type in ABC, it remains aligned horizontally to the left because it's text. Now if I highlight both cells and I click the left align button here, both align left. Click center, both center. Click right, they're both right, justified. If I click right again, they go back to the default. So that is our horizontal alignments. Four states, three buttons, four states. If I want to now vertically align them, let's make them taller rows. Notice that both cells default to vertical alignment at the bottom if I hover. Now let's go ahead and and notice that there's not four states. The horizontal has four states, click, 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 or no click. Vertical alignment has to have one of the three clicks, so it's a three state. So there's the bottom, there's the center, notice the text went up, and there's the top, top aligned. And that's your vertical alignment. Center and center, right in the middle of the cell. And they'll automatically move as you adjust your cells. So that's horizontal and vertical alignment. Next up, how to set the text angle and how to wrap the text in a cell. So I've entered text in this cell that's wider than the cell is. And we're going to, let me bring this over. We're going to click the wrap text button. And usually it looks like this. I just have my screen zoomed in for recording the video. So my wrap text button actually looks like this. But here's what happens when we click the wrap text. We you know, we're, we're not doing this where we double click and make the auto width. Nope. We want the width of the column to be like this. And as soon as we hit wrap text, boop, it automatically fits the words and makes the row height taller. Now, what's neat is it'll automatically adjust. Go one more, and then I can double click. So having the word wrap really is going to wrap it. It's different from if I hit the alt enter key here, which is a forced line break. Or if I hit the Alt Enter key here, that's a forced line break. There I've put two forced line breaks in, and no matter what I do with the column width, it's not going to adjust. So it's nice not having to use forced line breaks. And then using the word wrap, and everything will automatically adjust as you uh, make your column narrower. Like so. So there's my text. And if I want to rotate it, I can do the angle counterclockwise and voila, it's angled. And there's different angles. You know, I can angle it down. I can angle it vertical. <laughs> I can rotate the text up. Lots of different options. And then there's a format cell alignment that's going to give you even more control. Get it exactly the way you want it, hit OK, and it's going to be even more precise. So let me do one more, and that's the bottom format cell alignment. Or I could do the text like that as well. Next up, formats and decimal places, where you can do fewer decimals or more decimal places. So I've entered this number in the cell, and I want to run through various number formats. So the number formats are here in the toolbar. Let's start with the dollar sign, make it a currency. And I'll, uh, let's see, if I do the drop down, I have currencies other than the English US dollar, Chinese yuan or whatever. And it changes accordingly. Uh, I have percent. This isn't going to make sense because it's going to be a giant percent, but it gets rid of the decimal and shows the percent. Notice that whatever the formatting is, well, it shows the full number down here. Then I'll do comma and it puts a comma in, but the actual raw number stays the same up in the formula bar. So there is my value with a comma. Uh, what if I want to see more or less zeros? Well, I just do this, click, 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 and notice a couple things. If it gets too big, it goes to pounds. It has the trailing zeros, because my number up here stays the same the whole time. It only goes from one to nine with a decimal there. So as I go less, oops, if I go less, 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 
Now watch, as soon as I drop the 9, that 8 turned to a 9 because rounding is occurring. So 79 is going to turn to an 8 when I drop a 0. And 68 is going to turn to a 7. And 57 will turn to a 6 because it's doing all the rounding. But the actual number in the cell remains the same the whole time. This is just formatting the number of zeros that I want to see. So we just looked at these buttons down here that format a number. You can also do the drop down for some gen for different styles. So here's general, back to the default, no comma. Here is number, has two decimal places. Here is currency. Here is accounting. Now watch it indent to the left. Boop. Accounting, left justifies a dollar sign, right justifies, but with a space out there on the end, the number. And watch when I go from uh, accounting back to currency. It'll lose the space right here. Well, the number lost it, but anyway, currency would have done the same. Um, I clicked the wrong thing. What else do we have in the numbers? We have short dates, long dates, times. Oh, <laughs> I, I had to crack up on this. Let's put in a 0.75 here because I noticed they have a fraction <laughs> way down at the bottom. Where is it? There we go, fraction, three quarters. Or this dollar sign. Let's see what it does with the fraction should show a partial, and it does. <laughs> One, two, three, four, and four sevens. That's just too funny. 30 years I've been using Excel and never noticed that they had a fractional number type. <laughs> never had to use it, but now I know it's there. Next up, borders and more borders. It's a dialog that pops up and gives you more options. <clears throat> so the borders button is right here. We can highlight a range, and sure, we can click the borders button, and the, you get a grid and it fills everything in. Uh, and I hit, I could set it to no fill. I could have these gray lines. I just like to get rid of them with the all white. So anyway, I don't really like these grids and I don't usually use this button here. I do use the no borders to get rid of them. But what I usually do is something better. If you go to this drop down and you scroll to the bottom and you go way to the bottom to more borders, or alternatively, just hit the Control-1 key. brings up the same thing, a format cells dialog with a bunch of different options, and it's going to default to borders for us right now. But what I do here is that dark black, your eye shouldn't be focused on the borders. The borders don't matter. The titles and the numbers are what matter. They should be darker and, and stand out more. So I typically set the color to something pretty light, and then I'll go and I'll do an outline. And I'll do vertical only. So then I have my column set up. And then I'll come back and do the column header and control one. Still have my color. I'll do an outline because I've highlighted just those cells. And all, the outline's going to repeat that up, this across, that down, doesn't matter. But it's going to put the lower line in, which is what I want. So this could be some title, this is some title, 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 title. And usually I'll come in here and set that to, I don't know, light blue. And then I have all my data values in here and more data values all the way across here. Now if I have, let's see, maybe I want AAA and BBB and C. Sometimes I'll put a vertical here, control one. I have my gray still, all I gotta do is click this little drop down. And maybe here at the B, I'll throw in another one. Control-1, click that, because it's already set to the proper line type that I want. And it's set to the proper, you know, solid with one pixel thickness, two, three pixel thick thickness, all kinds of different versions of dashes and stuff. And then I have it set to a light color. So I don't have to change any of that. I just had to come in and click what I wanted. Hit OK. And so now what do I have? I don't need to have... I'll just do it to show you how ugly it is. If I put the middle ones in, that's too busy. It's nicer if there's some logical grouping with the value A, then separate them that way. And you, your eye can quickly see the logical groupings, A's, B's, and C's, and it can follow down the column. So anyway, that's how I like to use borders and not use this big, ugly, clunkety, oops, let me do it this way, right up there. That's just the... 
Next up, the pop-up dialog boxes for many of the toolbar button areas that we were looking at above. So notice on the toolbar that you have these little pop-out buttons for several of the toolbar areas. Now these three, number, alignment, and font, all pop up their own dialog. We'll look at that in a minute. The clipboard does its own thing. It's kind of interesting. The clipboard gives you a history. I've been working for a couple hours on multiple presentations. So I have some PowerPoint copies and I have some Excel copies, but all of that stuff is in the clipboard and I can come and paste it back from history. So kind of neat. Anyway, hit the next, get rid of it. Uh, let's look at the font. Let's put in some text here. Let's look at the font dialog. There's buttons that do not exist here, but they exist here. Strike through, hit OK. There's strike through. Hit this, I can undo it. I could do superscript. Undo that. You know, there's another thing I never showed you. Uh, let's do answer squared, right? And the two, you can actually highlight the two inside of the cell and then do the font and then do the superscript. And so some of these buttons apply to a subset. Uh, S and W, make them bold. So your entire cell, you, you could select the whole cell and the formatting applies, but you could also go select a subsection of the cell and the formatting will apply to just what you highlight. Either what you highlight in here, I'll do the N and the S, and there'll be overlap and do an U. Or you double click down here and to enter this cell. Here I've selected the cell, but double clicking enters the cell, gives me that blinking pointer, and then I can highlight stuff. And I'll just go and undo everything. Bold, bold. There we go. And I'll leave the squared. So anyway, a couple different things I'm mixing and matching there, but uh, back to this pop out dialog. For font, uh, we touched on everything that matters there. Alignment, yeah, there's a couple of extra features that you don't have in the alignment buttons that you have here. And font, we talked about. Number, there's really nothing. You pretty much have these buttons cover everything down here. And border is super important. We already talked about that. There's not much good stuff here in this button, but there's a lot of good stuff down here. Uh, oh, and one other thing I never touched on. For a given cell, sure you have outline. Sure you have, oh, I only have one cell selected. Um, let me hit OK. <laughs> Undo. Highlight two cells. I'm going to hit the Control-1 key. Brings up the same dialog as if you clicked any one of these, but hitting Control-1 just habit. I do it so much. Now that I have all the cells, I can hit outline, I can do a vertical, I can do a, horizon a horizontal, <sighs> never mind. I have to have four cells highlighted to do a horizontal. So fine, let me do that. Let me highlight four cells, control one, outline, inside, there's all those. And then if I do this way, I get a diagonal strike. And if I do that way, I get a diagonal strike. So you can actually have that many lines. <laughs> I'm just going to come back in here and do my favorite, no border. So I think that covers the pop-out menus and some other little formatting features. Next up, the Format Painter button. So I have some text laid out here, and I want to make this one look pretty and apply a bunch of formatting. I'll make it bold. I'll make it italic. I'll make it underlined. I'll make it yellow format. I'll put a big border outside of it. Ooh, I don't like the underline under the two, though. Let's get rid of that. That looks goofy. There, that's better. Huh. <laughs> that's going to cause a problem with my demo. Oh, well. Uh, now, what does a format painter do? Well, click your source cell. Click the format painter right here. Hover over it. It tells you about what the format painter is. It tells you how to use it. But I'm just going to go ahead and click it because I know how to use it. And let's make this one the same format. Wow, look at that. It was even smart enough not to put the underscore under the three. I thought for sure it would. That is fantastic. So anyway, I copied the format from here to there. But my value stayed the same. Um, here's something else you can do too. You can double click. Doot, doot. That's like caps lock. 
Notice that the format painter is depressed. Notice that the wire rope is circling. Now, I'm just moving my mouse pointer. No keys depressed, no mouse uh, buttons depressed. Just move my pointer, and I'm going to left click. Bam, and I'm going to left click. Bam, and I'm going to left click. Bam. So everywhere that I left click, it pastes the format. Oops. Yeah, I always do that. I do one wrong. So then what I do is I could come up here and click the button again to unlock it like caps lock. Now when I click, it's not going to do that anymore. And then I'll hit Control Z to remove my mistake. But uh, that's the format painter. Fantastic. You get your formatting the way you want, and then you copy it and paste it all over the place. And you don't have to do just one cell either. Let's undo, 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 undo. Let's go all the way back to here, and let's get a pattern of two cells. Select the formatting, and just go all the way over, and heck, we'll even go down. And it'll just paste that format everywhere. Grab it again, grab it, and boop. There we go. Now they match. So Format Painter is really nice. And the double click to lock it is also very nice. And don't forget to double click to unlock it too. It's a toggle switch. And last up, how to merge and center cells. So I've started a table here that's going to help us demonstrate the merge and center feature. And basically what we have is a title and then some subtitles. We have width and 12 and then we'll have like I don't know counts down here or something two of those two of those one of those and maybe we even have a name over here actually this will be good to do this a b c d four of them and heck we'll just make that equal to that plus one something like that just throw them all out here just to get some data laid out and actually, maybe we should even have these formatted as like inches, some kind of measurement. And then below is some kind of count. So how do we format all of this stuff? It, it, it looks kind of unwieldy. Well, first off, I'll just center those. And these are by default right justified. That's fine. And then there's our name. That's fine. So I want to apply borders. So let's do this. Highlight the whole table. And, and there are format as table, and you could do all kinds of stuff, whatever. I never use those. I don't like those. I'd rather control it myself. So if you want to, feel free to use the format as table and, and use one of those. But anyway, I'm going to do Control-1. I'm going to set the grid color to something light. doesn't matter what. I'll just pick that one. I'm going to do an outline, and I'm going to do the left lines. I'm going to hit OK. So I'm getting started, but stuff's not quite looking right. Next up, I'm going to highlight just that row, hit Control-1, and do an outline with gray on that. Looking better. And then this is a title row too, so Control-1, and do an outline on that, basically, or I could have clicked the bottom button. So there we go. My table's looking OK. But here, now that we have it all set up, the purpose of this little segment lesson is to teach you how to use the merge and center button. And you know what? I'm going to pause the video. I, this is a condensed screen so that it shows up better. At, it's at lower resolution. But this button looks a lot different typically on people's screens. So let me pause the video. Actually, I just had to resize the Excel screen. This is what that button usually looks like. Merge and center, it's really wide, and there's a drop down. But I'm going to reset it up, and it's going to go back to small. So this button does some pretty neat stuff. See this width? We just highlight all these columns, and we click the merge and center. And voila, it's centered. It merged all those cells into one. They're not individual cells anymore. And it got rid of those vertical dividing lines. Name, we're going to do the same thing. So we're just going to highlight name, the two rows, and merge it. And voila, it automatically centered it and dropped it down. And then we could highlight all of these and color them to light blue, and voila, we have a pretty looking table. Light gray borders, all of our alignments are set up. and Very nice. And that button is super useful when you're trying to align column headers and, and group things, make them look pretty. 
Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.